Hey everybody, Brian here from Witch Doctor. How are we all doing? I have an interesting test that uh, we conducted and it is on the effects of lubricating the interior of the case neck uh, with this micro lubrol and also annealing the cases. So in this test, what I did is I created four conditions. Um, a condition where we annealed and we mollied the interior of the neck. We annealed, but we did not molly the interior of the neck. We did not anneal, but mollied the interior of the neck. And we didn't anneal or use molly in the interior of the neck. Um, what I ended up doing was taking um, 20 cases, so I had five pieces of brass for each of these conditions, and used the same five brass for each condition. So it was the same five brass that was annealed and mollied after every firing. Um, fired these five shot groups, four of them, um, five times. So at, on the same day, um, so on this day here, you can see December 2nd, I shot these four five shot groups with the brass prepped um, and the uh, cartridges loaded with the, in these conditions. What I ended up doing was prior to firing though, I went ahead and took measurements of the case. So the headspace of the case, I used this case gauge micrometer, which you've probably seen in some of my other videos, to actually measure the head case. Um, and then I also took measurements of uh, base to O-give. Um, I have heard some information about, um, you know, whether uh, using molly uh, will change your base to O-give with it. If it's mollied, it will go into the case the same every time. Um, if it's not, uh, it, it likely won't. You're going to have different base to O-give measurements. Um, and then what I ended up doing was taking the total amount of, of error in the measurement. So I had a baseline measurement for each of these different measures. I had my new my uh, Nulon die set to um, basically plus 0.5 headspace on this Wilson gauge. And so that's the baseline for sizing it that way. The base to O-give with this particular bullet, the uh, Paul Porosky Diablo, was set at 1.741, which is 13 thousandths off the land in this particular uh, chambering. The chambering was a 6 PPC, Bat Nouveau, um, uh, Flavio Whisper Trigger, uh, Night Force 42 uh, scope and a Brux uh, uh, light varmint uh, 14 twist barrel um, it, it, rifle that I use for a lot of my testing. Um, and then what I did after I shot all the groups is I measured the outcomes. So I measured velocity, I measured standard deviation, and also group size. So let's look at the outcome for group size. I ran what's called an analysis of variance um, statistical um, procedure to find out were there any differences in the group size in these four groups. So I've here you can see these are the groups, the anneal and mauling, anneal no mauling, no anneal mauling, no anneal no molly. Shot five shot groups in each of those conditions. Um, and this is the aggregate of those five shot groups. So for the ones where I annealed and mollied, my uh, group aggregate was 0.2574. When I annealed and didn't molly, 0 0.347. Um, annealing, I'm sorry, not annealing, but mollying was 0.5744. And not annealing, not mollying was 0.423. Um, and the statistical, there was a statistical difference. So if that probability value is below 0.05, that tells me there was a real difference um, going on here. And where the real difference was, was the anneal mauling group did have statistically the lowest uh, size groups. So it appears um, based on this test that if you anneal and you molly, you're going to have likely have smaller groups than uh, if you don't do either of them. Uh, velocity, um, the outcome velocity, velocities were the same. The statistical test is not below 0.05, so that tells me that the velocities were about the same. They ranged in the 33, 60 to 70 range. Um, standard deviation size, 
uh, there was uh, n the, the statistical difference was not at 0.05, but it came close. It was 0.08. And looking at Anil Mali, uh, there it was lower than the rest of them in terms of standard deviation and much lower variance within that standard deviation. Um, across the five uh, five shot groups that I shot. So even though it wasn't statistically significant, it was very close. And what happens is with these statistics, if I would have shot this again, maybe six times or seven times, it likely would have produced a statistically significant finding. So um, I'm not gonna necessarily say that um, standard deviation is lower if you anneal a molly, but if I would have continued this test and fired more, um, it likely would have been. So um, I'm pretty sure it, it probably would. Um, and then what I did was I took those, those measurements that I mentioned before, took the total error of measurements in each of the conditions. So uh, this is by the thousandth. So in the anneal molly condition, the total error of measurement from the base to O give measurement um, and um, headspace error was five. Five thousandths was the total difference in, in all five of those pieces of brass over five different uh, sizings um, and, and seatings. Um, the anneal no molly was nine thousandths total error. Uh, no anneal molly was eleven and no anneal no molly was ten point five. Okay, so f finishing up with what I was just saying uh, a second ago, um, I took the uh, total error in the thousands of, of all of these measurements, the base to O give um, and the headspace error, totaled them all up, uh, five thousands, nine thousands, eleven thousands, ten and a half thousands. And then I, I measured, I, I put in the group size, the group aggregates that we just saw a moment ago. And then I ran what's called a correlation or a regression where I went to see does the group size correlate with the amount of error? And according to the statistics, it certainly does. And it correlates really big. So the less amount of error you have, the smaller group size you're gonna have. The more amount of error you have, the larger the group size you're gonna have. And that's what this metric is telling us. And, 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 that's, a, and that's a pretty large effect. To have an R squared, um, at 75.8% means that you about three quarters of the variance in group size can be explained by the error um, that, that, that occurs uh, when, you're, when you're sizing and when you're seeding uh, for base to OGIV. All right, so in summary, um, the conclusions are pretty pretty straightforward, pretty clear. If you anneal, your error in, in your head spacing um, is going to reduce. Um, if you don't anneal, you're likely to have error in your head spacing. One thing that I do to reduce error in my head spacing when I don't have access to an annealing machine, uh, typically in short range, short range bench rest matches where I only have a half an hour to, to load up and get my loads to the line to shoot my next match, is I use like a PMA uh, tool. This tool here allows you to adjust on the fly pretty quickly actually. You just twist this and move this and then tighten it back in and that allows you to adjust your die. So what happens is, is after you fire your brass multiple times, it becomes work hardened. And so your original setting um, doesn't size it enough. Uh, and so what you have to do is you actually have to um, adjust the die to go lower to then be able to seat to the same point that you did prior when your brass wasn't work hardened. So I utilize this. Um, in, in, in addition to that, I always take my case gauge micrometer with me to check my cases. So usually it happens after the second or third firing that it starts to become so work hardened that I have to start adjusting this die. Um, I have had matches where I've shot, you know, 10, 10 matches in a day and I have had to adjust this die about four thousandths. Um, so that at the end of the day, this die started with you know, a certain setting, but then I had to go down four thousands just to get the same amount of bump um, that I was when I started the match. So this is a tool that helps me mitigate 
the the effects of the brass not sizing correctly. Um, if 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 I have the opportunity, though, I absolutely will use an annealing machine because then I don't have to constantly be checking my brass with this thing, and I can have really high confidence that. Um, the annealing machine is going to soften that brass and then my original setting on my die is going to be uh, appropriate to size it exactly how I had it the last time I fired the brass. Um, other companies make similar types of um, configurations of this kind of thing like Widen here has a universal click adjustable lock ring. I have not used this yet but uh, I am going to sort of test this out and see. I definitely know that the PMA ring works, works really well. Um, but I'm going to try this one out here in the near future to see how this works. But this is basically the same type of tool that enables you to kind of quickly on the fly um, adjust your, your die. Um, it is extremely difficult to adjust your die without these kind of tools. Um, in fact, there's a lot of error that would occur and it would take a long time uh, to do so unless you had these tools. These tools, it takes five seconds basically. Um, in terms of the molly, I'm just gonna start taking what I'm calling here my molly station and my, my micro lubrol. And it's pretty simple. You just take this little, um, this piece here, uh, lube it up and then stick it inside the case neck after you have charged your, your bullet. And then at that point, you're done. Go ahead and seat your bullet and it will reduce the amount of error in the, uh, in the seating, um, in the base to ogive measurement. All right, so that's it. Um, basic conclusion is, uh, if you can, anneal, um, and definitely throw some molly on the inside of that case neck. Uh, if you can't anneal, then I recommend using, you know, some form of um, adjustable lock ring like this PMA tool or this wooden adjustable uh, so that you can uh, adjust your, your die and, and size your cases, your headspace appropriately. All right, everybody, thank you for watching. Uh, please subscribe, like, and share. Take care.